a new secret Apple product just leaked. A new major iPhone 15 feature has been revealed and Apple finally gives in. What's up guys, my name's Royce and this is Apple Next where we talk about all the latest Apple news of the week. If that all sounds good to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get into it. First up, it looks like Apple's finally listening and bringing some big changes to the Apple Watch in their new software update. So it's reported that in Watch OS 10 that Apple's finally gonna give us a new redesigned home screen layout. Now, hopefully if this is true, I am going to be so happy because <laughs> since Watch OS 1, the first gen Apple Watch, we've been dealing with, I think what they call the honeycomb layout where the apps are just everywhere and you're scrolling and it's hard to tap and it's just not that fun to use. And Apple kind of remedied that with, I believe, Watch OS 4 and gave us the option to switch to the grid view which is better. I actually prefer that over the honeycomb layout. But if you're trying to find apps that like are in the uh, lower lettered situation in the alphabet, the S's down to the Z's, you know, and if you have a lot of apps on your Apple Watch, you're, you're doing this. You're just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling until you finally get it. So an update is definitely overdue. And they're saying that this update, the watch will finally start acting more so like the iPhone and how the icons are laid out. So they'll probably be more like stacked next to each other like you would see on the on an iPhone screen. And I really hope that's the case because we can all agree Apple has been coasting with this whole Apple Watch situation, right? And I don't blame them. There's not a lot of competition in the field. They don't really need to like do a lot of big redesigns. I mean, we got the Apple Watch Ultra, uh, which was nice, but you know, there was pretty much just a bigger screen, a little bit sleeker. They got the action button. But other than that, they don't really need to change anything because no one's giving them any pushback. So the fact that they're finally addressing this is definitely welcomed. And I really hope it's true and I can't wait because I'm going to do it immediately. I'm going to switch everything. Now, if these reports are true, we can expect Apple to officially announce this new software update at their worldwide developer conference in June, WWDC, and then it will be officially released probably sometime in the fall as they usually do with their new products. And it usually will be accompanied with a new Apple Watch release. So next up, we got some more details regarding the upcoming iPhone 15 Pro Max camera. Those are a lot of words to say. <laughs> The big feature being a new periscope lens that's supposed to allow you to take way clearer pictures when you zoom in with your phone. And some new reports are saying that this lens will be able to zoom up to six times, which doesn't really sound like much, but it's really good in situations where if you're trying to take a picture of something, you're a little bit farther away than you would like to be. You can zoom in a little bit and instead of having to succumb to that horrible blurriness that comes with digital zoom, it's supposed to keep your images a lot clearer so you could still take really nice photos while you're zooming in. In my last video, I also talked about with this camera upgrade, it looks like the camera bump on the iPhone is going to increase just a little bit more, which I'm personally not a fan of, but I get it, cameras gotta get better. And it looks like the reason for that is the sensor in the iPhone 15 Pro Max camera is actually going to be a little bit bigger. And that's a good thing because a bigger sensor means better photos, especially in low light. We all love to take pictures at night. Taking pictures in the sun is for chumps. And all these upgrades are great, but again, these are only for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And as the story always goes, if you wanna take the best pictures, you gotta pay the most money. And next up, it looks like we're actually finally getting some new iMacs. So if you're a fan of the Mac, you were probably super excited when the iMac got that M1 chip upgrade. And if you're a fan of the iMac, you're probably very disappointed when they haven't upgraded it since. And it's it's been, what, a couple of years now? So good news is we are getting closer to that new upgrade happening, but we are gonna have to wait a little bit longer and mainly because we gotta wait for Apple to announce their new M3 chip because the reports are saying that's the chip they're gonna use in this new iMac upgrade. So they're gonna completely skip the M2 and go straight to the M3. Maybe the M2 chip wasn't a big enough jump to maybe justify putting them in the more powerful systems. And that's also probably why we haven't seen the Mac Pro get anything yet. But according to reports, when that M3 chip actually comes out, it's looking like it probably won't be until later this year, which means the computers will either come out later this year or maybe even pushed into 2024. So if you're looking to upgrade your iMac anytime soon and you wanna take advantage of the newest and latest hardware from Apple, you're still gonna have to wait a little bit, but you can have peace of mind that the update is coming. Next up, watch out for this new malicious software that's trying to steal your stuff. So it looks like there's this new malware, mal, malware, malware, one of, one of those words. So there's really bad software out there called Mac Stealers that's looking to jack your passwords and your credit card information from browsers like Firefox, Chrome, and Brave browsers. And it looks like they're also trying to crack Safari as well. So no browsers are safe right now. I guess maybe Edge? Because they didn't mention Edge. Is Edge 
the safest browser right now. And the way they're doing this is kind of interesting. It's through downloading this weed app, which it's not really clear how they're actually distributing this and making people download it. But through some means you download this weed app, not knowing it's a bad app, I guess somehow. And by trying to install it, it asks for your password on your computer to get access to your system preferences. As soon as you enter that password, you're done. So I thought this was just something I should share so you guys know about it to watch out. So yeah, just don't download weird apps from weird sites and you should be good. Next up, Apple's introducing a new feature in their upcoming software update. So it looks like in iOS, 17, Apple's going to be including a new native app that's going to be called the journaling app or something like that. But it looks like it's going to be an app for journaling, logging your day to days, kind of just checking up on you. And it's a part of their initiative to get more involved in mental health. Now, if you're like me, this probably sounds familiar if you used an app like Day One, which pretty much does the exact same thing. And with it being a native app, that means Apple can put their own special sauce on it. Just like when the Apple Watch got sleep tracking, there were a lot of apps that did that, but with it being just integrated straight into the watch, it just made the whole experience a lot simpler. And in my last video, I talked about how Apple's working on a dedicated Apple Pencil for the iPhone. So this is another use case where the pairing could work perfectly for those who want more of like a traditional journaling experience. And they're saying the app could come with like a discovery feature where it recognizes when you're next to like other people, whether it be friends or family. And I assume this has to be a setting that you turn on. And it might sound weird at first, cause it's like, why would I share my inner thoughts with others? But if it's like a trusted group and you guys are all putting together like, hey, this is what I went through this week. And you can kind of like band together from that, that could be pretty powerful. But We'll just have to wait and see when iOS 17 comes out. Next up, it looks like electric cars are ditching CarPlay. So two big electric car companies, Rivian and GM, have come out and said that they're getting rid of Apple CarPlay in all their future electric cars moving forward. And the reasoning behind this is that they wanna be able to control the user experience end to end without having to rely on another third party company or how CarPlay works is if you don't have wireless CarPlay supported in your car, you have to have your phone plugged in. So they kind of just wanna negate all that and just have the entire user experience right there. And this isn't anything new because Tesla's pretty much led the charge in not supporting CarPlay at all. Now, I don't know about GM, but Rivian has found a way to kind of soften the blow from this news a little bit because they did say that they do plan to support the Apple Watch as a key feature and they do plan to integrate Apple Music into whatever their experience is. So that kind of subsets a little of the frustration. So you're still getting somewhat of an Apple experience within their own experience, which at that point, you could just give it the ability to have CarPlay. You could still have your own experience. Let me choose whether your built-in software, whatever you're about to do, is actually worth dropping CarPlay for. I feel like that should be a consumer decision and not a company decision. But on the other side of that, I'm sure these companies also have to fork up some data to Apple in order to support this. And and they also are kind of at the mercy of whenever Apple decides to update CarPlay, which they do like little small ones, like, you know, spread throughout the year, but the main big ones with the big new features, that's pretty much about once a year. But it is an interesting topic. And as electric cars get more popular, I'm pretty sure other companies are gonna kind of start looking at this and be like, oh wait, should we be doing the same too? But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Next up, it looks like some more information has leaked regarding Apple's new secret product. And what's this new secret Apple product, you may ask? I'm talking about Apple's reported VR, AR, MR, whatever you wanna call the R's headset. And these rumors have been going around for a long time with Apple wanting to get into the virtual reality space, especially with like the Oculus getting more popular, the HTC Vive, even back with Google's Google Glass. It seemed like this was the direction that technology was heading, um, and then it wasn't. <laughs> This is still such a very niche market, which means for Apple to wanna to get involved, they may have something really cool up their sleeves. And the reason I say this is Apple, when they decided they wanted to make phones, the industry laughed at their faces and they're like, that's stupid. And then when Apple was like, we're gonna make watches, they're like, that's hilarious, that's stupid. And both have become huge successes. And the first report being that this headset is reportedly going to have full compatibility with iOS and iPad apps. Now, if you've used a VR headset, you know this is huge because there aren't a lot of apps <laughs> for these headsets. So if Apple can set up an experience where you put on that headset and all your gaming apps are already there. They don't have to do much to adapt it, right? It's not the VR version of that. They all just work and you can just start playing right then and there. That's major, right? There's already reports that they're gonna have a special Apple Fitness Plus app 
for this. And if they are doing something like that, that means it has to be pretty lightweight. And it looks like they're gonna help this by having an external battery versus having a built-in battery like the Oculus does. And they're saying it's gonna be a situation where it's like clipped onto your side or something like that. And it's gonna be the size of like a MagSafe battery pack. It's still gonna be small and lightweight, but then that means you'll probably have to have a cable running from the battery to the headset, which depending on how that situation is, could either be really annoying, but it gives you the option where they're saying the battery might only last like two hours. If you could just swap those batteries out, that could be really cool. But also knowing Apple, that probably means they're gonna sell these batteries for a lot of money uh, because they know people are gonna want a lot of them. And this next feature, I'm actually kind of 50-50 on, but they're saying that headset could also double as an external monitor for your Mac. Say you have a Mac mini or a Mac studio, you travel a lot. Instead of having to pack up a whole like external monitor, 15 inch, however big monitor you have, you just carry around your VR headset and now you're, you know, wherever you are vacationing or something, plop your Mac mini on a desk, you got your VR headset and you're kind of good to go. So I get why that could be a cool feature, but I still think it's not enough to really move the needle on why we need one. And also how much money <laughs> is this thing gonna cost if it could do everything I just listed? And on top of that, I forgot to mention, they're saying it's supposed to have an M2 chip in there. So this is pretty much a computer. So I can easily see this being a, two, $3,000 thing. I mean, they might even get wild with it and do five or 6,000 because Apple just sometimes goes crazy like that, but not just so much to make money, but also to kind of limit the amount of people who may even have it to kind of figure out what this first generation is gonna be like and actually figure out what people are gonna use this for. Same thing with the Apple Watch, the Gen 1 Apple Watch. It was like, hey, it's a fashion item. And then everyone was like, no, it's not. They're like, cool, it's for fitness. And everyone's like, okay. And we moved on from there. And that's all the Apple news I got for the week. I'll catch y'all in the next one.